Welcome back to another episode of the Parenting and Pregnancy Podcast, where I sit down with experts, parents, and other individuals discussing all of the topics relevant to you through pregnancy, childbirth, parenting, and beyond. So if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, consider subscribing so you don't miss new episodes. This week, I sat down with Brooke Betcher, a birth doula in the Black Hills region, and we discussed ways a postpartum doula can help you, the importance of a comfortable environment during labor, how to prepare your body for labor, myths about doula support, and the goal of a birth doula. It was a really great podcast, really informative to those of you who are unsure about hiring a birth doula, maybe new to the concept of what a birth doula is. So without further ado, let's get into this conversation. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time to chat with me today, Brooke. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited. I'm excited to talk to you as well. Um, I I kind of want to start by just getting a, an introduction to you and learn more about um, what you do and and how you got to that to that point. Yeah. Um, my name is Brooke Fletcher, and I am a mom to three. I have a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a now nine month old. Um, so that's kind of my home life. I've been married to my husband now for six years and he's a youth pastor. Um, and so yeah, that's just kind of home life. And then um, I'm a birth doula is my kind of passion. And um, I love to help moms in that aspect. And just kind of like you said, like how I got to that point is my husband and I were in college at Oklahoma Wesleyan and I was in nursing school and I did my nursing externship in labor and delivery and I just fell in love with it completely. Um, I was like, there's nothing else I want to do. Um, that was my goal and that was my mission is just to be the best labor and delivery nurse that I could be. And then um, when I was like a semester away, semester and a half away from graduating, I got pregnant with my daughter and it just at that point was impossible for both of us to be in school, along with our goals for raising a child. And so we just decided that I would, at that point, stay home with her um, and kind of, at that point, see what happens after that. Um, And as soon as I was done with nursing school, I was like, well, my passion is still to help moms. My passion is still to be with a laboring mother. How can I do that? Um, And so that's kind of where I looked into the birth doula role and also my own birth experience. My first birth experience was less than perfect. And that just also added on to my passion of helping laboring moms. And so that's kind of when when I looked into the whole doula world. And since then, I did my training and I've just loved it so much. So it's kind of how I got into it. Well, that is a really um, interesting path, and I love that even though kind of life kind of threw a curveball and um, nursing school didn't make sense, I love that you were still able to, to stay in that realm of your passion and, and really make it work. Yeah, um, and so one thing I want to cover really quick is, because I think it's kind of confusing, um, and some people don't know what either are, but you're a birth doula and I'm a postpartum doula. So yeah. I kind of want to cover the differences because what we do um, are just kind of two completely different services. So why don't you start by telling us what a birth doula does? And then maybe I'll spend a minute just explaining briefly what a postpartum doula does. Right. So a birth doula would be anything prenatally. Um, so we might meet with the moms two to three times before she delivers, just getting her birth specific goals, working on her birth plan, what are her preferences for labor, um, working through all the options, the pros and the cons, um, and just letting her be informed of all our decisions while just being there to answer questions. Um, but also once labor is actually starts, then we're just kind of there for one-on-one support once she's comfortable with me coming or um, whatever, again, mom's preferences. So just once labor starts, then it would be one-on-one support. It would be position changes, comfort measures, massaging, um, 
and just a birth coach in general, just being there one-on-one -on -one support. So emotional support, physical support, whatever she might need, partner support, um, just guiding her through her options, guiding through pros and cons and yeah. And then we might make one um, postnatal visit, um, but then the postnatal aspect would be more of your realm and world. So. Okay, so you're focused on um, pregnancy support and then labor support. Yeah. Um, all right, and then myself as a postpartum doula, um, I kind of am on the opposite side of things. So I might do one or two prenatal visits, but those aren't focused on labor or comfort techniques or anything like that. It's more about preparing um, the home for baby and maybe making sure you have everything set up and everything that you need. And then postpartum, I come in and support moms with newborn care and meal prep and cleaning and breastfeeding and things like that. So two totally different realms. Um, so I'm just glad we were able to cover that really quickly for those who are kind of yeah, confused. Right. Wait, you're both doulas. Why do you do different things? It's two yeah. different worlds. Yeah, I'm more focused on preparing for labor and you're preparing for baby. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and we complement each other well, but right. different different roles, yeah. Um, okay, so you kind of told us a little bit about um, what a birth doula does. Um, can you give me some specific, maybe specific things that a birth doula might do for, uh, let's say, during labor to support a mother? Yeah, um, I guess I'll start with like my favorite aspect of helping moms do labor is just creating a comforting, calming, peaceful, and safe birth environment. Um, so I like to set the mood for mom. I like to hang up string lights. I like to do essential oils. I like to do um, massage techniques, um, get her favorite playlist, soothing sounds, soothing music. Um, and again, it's all her preferences. So we can talk about all those beforehand, but I like to make sure all those bases are covered first. Um, and then also just moving through labor, progressing labor, depending on which stage she's in. Um, so that could be different position changes that could be focusing on relaxing, resting. Um, and then towards the active stage of labor, it would be position changes, um, moving, getting things going. Um, uh, yeah. So, and then water therapy making sure she stays calm the whole time and also just allowing partner to be involved as much as he or she, whoever their um, personal partner is, um, making sure they're involved as much as possible also. So maybe that's coaching that person or helping that person be involved or being there with mom while that person goes and gets something for mom or yeah. Okay, so it really changes during the different stages of labor um, and preferences, is that correct? Yeah, I would say so, because different, like beginning of act, or beginning stage of labor, you're just kind of like ignore, ignore as much as possible, rest, relax. Um, and then as you move into active labor, it's okay, position change, how can we get this baby down? How can we get this baby going? And um, so yeah, and each mom will have a different preference for each different stage of labor also. So, yeah. Okay, and then I wanna go back to something you said at the beginning really quick. Um, and that is, you were talking about how much you really enjoy um, setting up a really comfortable environment um, and really calming environment based on that mom's preferences. What is the significance in having that calming environment during labor? Um, I like that question. Is that Studies show that if a mom has adrenaline running through her body, that it can actually stop or slow down labor. So I like to push relaxation in this safe environment just for the sake of feeling calm and feeling peaceful it can um, speed labor or just help things move steadily along. As soon as a mom feels tense, as soon as a mom feels scared or fearful, labor can stop or significantly slow down so that's my favorite thing about labor is just making sure she feels calm and peaceful 
because it can just make labor smooth instead of slowing down, stopping unnecessarily. So. Okay, so there's a really functional purpose to um, making yeah. the environment as relaxing as possible. Yeah, because sometimes we don't understand like how our emotions play into our physiological body, um, but sometimes it can go hand in hand. So. And can this be done both at home and in a hospital or birth center or something like that? Can you still use, use tools yeah. to help calm the environment? Absolutely. I think when people think of a hospital, that in itself can sometimes cause anxiety or fear. Um, but a lot of my things that I bring with me are quickly set up and quickly taken down. So if a mom wants it at home, then we can set it up as fast as we can at home. And then once she's ready to go to the hospital, it's just easily taken down, thrown into the bag, and then brought with us to the hospital um, or the birth center or wherever she decides to deliver. Um, so easy transitions, quick transitions, either way. Um, so yeah, whatever we set up, we can easily take with us wherever we go. So, okay. Um, that's great that you have that flexibility of location. And I like that we can transition because maybe you want to labor at home as long as you can, but you still yeah. want those, those, that similar feel, um, at the hospital, or maybe you're planning to deliver at home, but we need to make a pivot and, and transfer somewhere. So that, right. that's really great. And I like that you think of that ahead of time of how can we, create this setup that can be um, used in any location. Um, I really like that. Um, one common question that I hear when I discuss the benefits of a birth doula um, is why why bother if I have a partner? Like, What about my husband or my boyfriend or my mom? They're going to be there, so why would I hire a birth doula? Can you right. kind of talk about talk to that yeah and I kind of agree is like that's the biggest thing I hear too is oh I don't need a doula because my husband's going to be the perfect coach for me. um and I agree with that I think that um having your mom there or having your husband there or partner is a great thing um and I am never there to take the place of that person um I am there to assist them sometimes more than assisting the mom um, and that would look like me coaching dad or coaching the mom, the birth mother's mom, like grandma in that situation of how to specifically help. That might be, oh, help her in this position change, help her with this type of counter pressure, Re use this massage tool to comfort her. This is how you can massage her back, her feet, her hands, her shoulders, um, I might coach the dad to pay attention to her breathing. If you see or hear her breathing in a high pitch, maybe remind her to use a low and slow pitch instead. Um, coach dad or coach grandma on how to, what things to look for. Um, um, so yeah, I think that sometimes we can play a bigger role for the partner there, even sometimes more than being there for the mom. Um, or on the opposite side, there's some partners who want nothing to do with helping or just want to be there, but not really want to be involved. And so in that aspect, too, we can be beside mom and be her one on one support and then encourage the partner or grandma to be involved when necessary. Um, so either situation, we can kind of encourage to be involved when necessary and coach the mom. Um, and grandma and husband, um, how to help as much as possible and encourage them to help and help them learn how to help. And that's what a, some of the prenatal visits are for is just getting both of them mentally ready and physically ready on what to expect. So especially for first, first time moms and first time dads, it's hard to know what to expect if you've never done it before. So um, a lot of education is important in that aspect also. So it sounds like you're coming with a lot of skills that you're familiar with and a lot of knowledge about labor um, and labor progression and comfort techniques and, and processes and things like that. Is that correct? Yeah, I would say 
So, I mean, again, I started in the nursing realm and I have been in the OB in the hospital setting. So I understand all the physiological things, the anatomical ways of birth. Um, and also by personal experience, I mean, I've had three children myself, um, but also just helping the countless moms. Um, so I've like the nursing realm, the motherhood realm, and also just the experience of dealing with or helping mothers through their labor experience. So, yeah. Well, I love that to kind of have all of those different perspectives that play into your role as a, as a doula. Um, I think that's really great to, to see things from all of those different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of talking about these prenatal visits and coming in and um, discussing uh, comfort techniques and doing some coaching and education. Um, but what would you say is kind of like the number one way that a mother could prepare her mind and her body for labor beforehand? Yeah, I mean, my go-to answer is education is key. Um, so I think getting a good um, labor and delivery class, getting um, as much reading done as you can or research done as you can, taking the breastfeeding class before you start breastfeeding, taking the labor and delivery class several weeks before you're due or um, doing all those things and then putting it into practice. Um, I think most of labor is a mental game. So if you can prepare your mind and prepare your body physically before labor starts, um, is such a vital part of labor. Um, I like to tell moms, even though it seems silly, just set your mind in the aspect that you're in labor. Go in your room, relax, or take a shower and relax and just put your mind as if you're in labor already. That way you can prepare your mind mentally once you're actually in pain, you're practicing your coping mechanisms, you're practicing your um, what am I saying? Breathing techniques. What positions are you going to do? Get your partner involved. Practice the counter pressures. Um, so put all your education into practice before labor starts. That way you're not panicked and you don't know what to do once it does start. Um, so yeah, education and then practice. So pretty much you're encouraging, well, you're encouraging self self-education yeah. um and education but it sounds like you're also really encouraging kind of that development of muscle memory since it's such a head game right. like you said um to to practice it enough that when you're in the situation it's easier to do because you've done it before is that kind of what you're saying exactly yeah okay um i think that's that's some really helpful advice um and i loved what you said about breastfeeding class before you start breastfeeding. Yes, um, I've talked to countless moms who watched the videos and then after they've had baby, they were like, oh, I made fun of the videos because I never, I never thought it would be this hard or I didn't pay attention because I never thought it'd be this hard. And here I am struggling. Um, so I think, yeah, like you said, it's just doing everything beforehand because then after you have at least a little bit of a head start. Yeah, as a lactation consultant, hearing those words is gold because yeah, it doesn't, I think a lot of people just, there's this misconception between the idea of something being natural and easy, right? Breastfeeding is natural. It's a biological process. Therefore, it must be easy. Right. And that's just not true. And so then you already have a newborn, you're struggling with, with something related to breastfeeding, and now you're trying to learn about it. And um, so I love that idea of, of kind of getting some of that education. And sometimes we can prevent problems then because right. we can get ahead of them and, and we know what to expect and, and what we can do to solve them. So I love, I love that. And it makes sense that you're doing that same preparation for labor and for birth. So. Yeah, because, you know, like the postpartum period is you're exhausted, you're tired, you're 
frantic sometimes. And so if you just have that little bit of knowledge before you start to make things just a little easier. Yeah, and research shows that mothers in their third trimester can retain information better at that point in their life than at any other stage of their life. Um, and in contrast, um, I don't know about with everything, but I'm sure it can be extrapolated, but they did breastfeeding studies um, where a lactation consultant went into a room postpartum and gave 20 minutes of education and about 10% of the information given was retained. And and I think that's pretty, sub, you know, par for course when it comes to the postpartum period. You're exhausted. There's so much going on. You kind of have some fuzziness to your brain and, and you have adrenaline and, and all sorts of hormone changes. Um, so to prepare during that stage when you have that hyper ability to understand and retain information, I think is really a great time to do it. Yeah, for sure. These are neat facts. I like that. Yeah, it's it's really interesting when you look at it. And then you, I don't want to go, go too far on a tangent, but you yeah. look at our kind of educational system and it's structured more around giving education after baby comes. Okay. Um, but but all of this research shows us that that's not a really great time to learn anything more than you have to. So. Right. Yeah. Um, sorry, a little tangent there, but I always <laughs> find that Good. to be really interesting. Um, and I always advocate take classes before baby comes on postpartum yeah. care and newborn care and breastfeeding and all the things. Absolutely. So. Um, Okay, so you told us a little bit about um, how you can support moms, how you can support partners, um, preparing an environment um, to really facilitate that labor. Um, but I, another thing I really want to discuss is, is some of the myths about a birth doula and, and birth in general, um, because I think there's a lot of them out there. Um, so... Can you share some of those myths that you've heard and maybe maybe challenge them with what you know and understand and with what you do? Yeah, I think the biggest one that I hear is, oh, only the naturalists will get a, a birth doula. I don't need a doula because whatever the reason. Um, and I would I would say to that is, that you can get a birth doula, whatever your birth plan is. If you plan to be natural, we can be there. If you plan to have an epidural, we can be there. If you plan to have IV meds, we can be there. If you plan to have a water birth, we can be there. If you plan to have a home birth, we can be there. Um, and so I would just say that whatever your birth plan, whatever your options, a birth doula can be right for you. Um, for the aspect of we're there to answer questions. We have all the knowledge surrounding all the options. We have the pros, we have the cons. Um, and it's just one more person to add to your birth team who can help you in position changes. Regardless if you have an epidural or not, um, a doula can be there for you. Because even, even if you have an epidural, even if you have IV meds, it's recommended to change positions every 30 minutes, regardless of your birth plan. Um, you got to change positions. You got to do all the things, even if you have whatever options. Um, so that would be my biggest one that I hear from moms. Um, and the second one is one that we've already talked to of, oh, I don't need a doula because I have a partner. Um, so those are the top two that I hear. Yeah, I love that you brought up. That's that's what I was going to bring up if you didn't it, about um about having, um, about a birth doula being able to support you with, with whatever birth that you want to have, um, because I hear that a lot too. Well, I, I think I want an epidural. I probably want an epidural and, and, and kind of this concern that a birth doula would push you away from making a decision like that, um, mm -hmm. rather than support you through that, that, um, decision and I love that you brought up position changes because that is a big one that a lot of women I don't think understand when they go into it that with an epidural you still need to make those those um, position changes to help baby get down and into the pelvis um, and kind of navigate that space and um, I'm sure birth doula would be great at 
just having knowledge about those positions that are really um, possible with an epidural and the best way to help mom move into that position. And because once you have an epidural, you have like a catheter and, and usually some uh, uh, an IV and different things like that, to have that experience with moving around with all of that um, in a hospital bed, I think that's really valuable. Um, yeah, and just someone to answer all the questions of like, okay, if I want an epidural, what's gonna happen to me? Or talk you through each process. Cause like you said, if you choose to get an epidural, you have to have X, Y, and Z after, or what to expect after. Um, postpartum period are things differently. Like we can answer all those questions or we know how to work the, the hospital bed in order to position change with an epidural. Um, there's so many options just for the hospital bed, even if you're confined to bed. Um, you can use peanut balls, the labor balls, all the different things. And so we can be help even if you can't move, you know, so yeah. That is really great. I love, I love that there's so much information to, to learn out there. And I, I love that there's somebody that, that you can have someone there to walk you through it because it's really overwhelming, um, right. to prepare for something like that. Um, and what about, what about help with kind of deciding when to get that epidural maybe? Is that something that, that you can help with in, in determining maybe what's the best point to get it or how long should we wait or is there any reason to, um, is that something that you can help with? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, some moms will want the epidural as soon as possible. You get to the hospital, you're checked in, you want it immediately. And there's other moms who might say, oh, I want to wait as long as possible. Um, and then there's the in-between moms who would just say, oh, I want it when I decide in the moment. Um, and whatever the mom chooses or her preference is, we can explain the pros and cons to each one. Um, and with that is if you want an epidural as soon as possible, you might risk slowing labor down and more complications because of that. Um, and so we might say just throw out the pros and cons to each option, if that makes sense. Um, and so a good tip that I like to tell moms is once you want an epidural, you can expect at least 45 minutes ish, maybe longer, maybe quicker, because they need to run the fluids, they need to um, put the IV in if you haven't had one already, they need to prep the room. And also you're kind of at the mercy of the anesthesiologist. If there's not one immediately available, if it's the middle of the night, it might be an hour and a half, two hours before one can get there. Um, so whatever the option is, you kind of need to learn how to cope through labor anyways. Um, and so we can be there during that transition period from in pain to epidural and now you're feeling better. Um, and so there's, there's choices with, each option that a mom might choose. And we can kind of be there to explain the options, to explain the pros and cons, to as soon as possible, as late as possible, um, and help in the in-between transition times. So, yeah. There you go. Okay, so, okay, so it sounds like there's a lot of variables that, um, that play into how long it takes to get the epidural and um, the impacts the epidural will have on your labor progress depending on at what point your labor is and everything. Is that yeah. correct? I would say yeah. Yeah. Well, that is really interesting. Can you think of any other myths um, that you hear frequently? Um, I would also think of like the outside thing, maybe not a myth, but just the connotations of a doula is like, we want to press on natural choices is, oh, a doula is going to judge you for choosing an epidural or a doula is going to judge you for choosing a hospital birth or just because like the myth of that we're supernatural and we don't want any other choices to be made. Um, but I would say that that's definitely not true. 
um, we're all for informed choices. So if you know all the options and you've been educated for all the options, then feel free to choose whatever is best for you. Each mom is different, each family is different, um, each baby is different, and you need to choose what's best for you and your family, and we're just there to help guide you in those choices. So whether that's the most natural birth possible or even up to you prefer a planned C-section and anything in between is perfectly fine as long as that's what mom wants and that's what mom is happy with. So if the goal of a birth doula is not to get everyone to have the most natural birth possible, how would you sum up the goal of a birth doula or at least your the goal your goal as a birth doula? Yeah, I would say my personal goal because each doula might slightly be different. Um, my personal goal is just be educated in and choose what's best for you and your little family. Um, and each mom is different. Each mom has a different story. And so that might hinder, or not hinder, but that might influence your birth preferences also. A mom might choose pain medication because of her history or not choose pain medication because of her history in whatever aspect that might look like. So yeah, my goal is just be educated, be informed, and choose what's best for you. And I'm there to guide you in all of those choices. So. Oh, that's really great. So kind of the role of a teacher and a coach, it sounds like. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Um, is there anything else you want to share with us kind of about what you do or um, benefits of the birth doula or anything, anything at all? Um, I guess a few little facts is just studies show that women who have birth doulas um, is 25% of women have lower birth times, if that makes sense. Like labor time is 25% less with a birth doula. Um, C-section rates go down. Pain medication requests go down. Um, there's many benefits to having a one-on-one -on -one birth coach or birth doula after your birth and part of your birth team. Um, so I like all the little fun facts about doula. Um, but yeah, just a doula is there to help educate so, and emotional support, physical support. Okay, so beyond just from an emotional standpoint, it's really nice to have that support. There's actual physical benefits um, and intervention reducing benefits to having a birth doula. Yeah, there's like hard facts and studies out there to show the benefits. You know, sometimes people can say all these things, but then there's no evidence. Um, so I think that that's kind of the fun thing about birth doulas and even postpartum doulas and lactation consultants is there's evidence to support the things that we're saying and educating on. Um, and so I like to see that. I'm kind of like a facts person. <laughs> I like to see all the things that we say are actually true and there's evidence to prove those things so yeah well that is really that's really awesome um how can people learn more about your services and what you do maybe your social media information for those located in the black hills region yeah i am not like a super technological person um but i try um so i have a facebook um i'm for life doula and birthing services um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. And then my email is forlifedoula at gmail.com. Um, so my information is on Facebook and I think Instagram. But those are the three that I do, really. Facebook, Instagram, and uh, email. So Awesome. Yeah. And I will link all of those down below for anyone who wants to, to find those. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to to chat with me and share this information. I'm I'm pretty confident that it's going to be helpful to some some mothers out there who are are wanting to learn more about birth doulas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love I love networking with other other birth professionals. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, and and we'll go ahead and end it here.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Brooke Betcher. If you enjoyed it and you want to get a hold of her, as always, all of her contact information is linked down in the show notes. So go ahead and go check her out. If you enjoyed this episode, like it, subscribe in whatever podcast app that you use so you don't miss any new episodes. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening.